The burning of fossil fuels causes climate change and air pollution, which in turn will screw up the planet and our health. Climate change threatens the things we cherish most in our life, like the safety of our children, their future, and their opportunities. Now, most of us worry about climate change and what we're doing to the planet, at least a little bit. But we also want to keep on flying and driving and buying all the cheap stuff that we like. The human brain has, however, its ways of rationalizing these contradictions in our behavior. We keep on burning fossil fuels, uh, although we know it's in our common interest to stop. Because our brain tells us that it doesn't matter if I stop burning fossil fuels, if everyone else keep on. So instead of changing our behavior, we point at politicians. But politicians, they are human too. So they rationalize and they point at other nations and say, if we take actions and they don't, we may lose jobs and I won't be re-elected. And they say, since this is a global problem, it only has global solutions. I hear that a lot. So we're heading for disaster. And if we don't change course, we will end up where we're heading. Uh, we all know this, and still very little seems to happen. It's very frustrating, isn't it? But before you go all depressive about this, I would like you to think about something completely different. I want you to imagine your coolest gadgets, like your big flat screen TV or your super air thin laptop or your smartphone. And now I want you to imagine reading the news on the bus with a gadget from 20 years ago. Isn't it amazing how these gadgets and all the services on them have changed our life? How can it be that a device that replaces our phone, our camera, our music collection, our photo album, our bank, our interaction with friends, I could go on forever. How can it be that this little device, this fantastic gadget, costs less than what a regular phone did back in 1990? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world, the economics of gadgets. The more we want them, the cheaper they get. While limited resources like urban apartments or oil gets more expensive when demand increases, gadgets get cheaper. This is the dynamic of competitive markets. This is industrial logistics, economies of scales, and the technology improvements that happen when engineers and entrepreneurs see profit down the road and apply the best of science. So what if this dynamic could be copy-pasted to the mitigation of climate change? What if diesel trucks are those old computers? What if petrol cars are those heavy, not-so-smart phones from your childhood? And what if the solution to climate change actually is gadgets, mass-produced, high-quality, efficient, and steadily cheaper gadgets that replace all the polluting stuff so fast that we will laugh for the solutions we have today. Now, to tell you the truth, this is already happening in the power sector. Solar panels are gadgets. Wind turbines are very large gadgets and they have gotten 80 to 90 percent cheaper in 10 years. Now, this did not just happen by itself. This is a result of demand created by incentives, by good policies in countries like Denmark and Germany. They created demand which led to an industrialization, which led to lower prices, which led to more demand, which led to more industrialization and even lower prices. How? Now, how can we make the same thing happen in transport, which is the other big consumer of fossil fuels? 
I'm quite certain that smart and electric mobility will eventually take over from fossil fuels sometime in the future. But we don't have the time to wait for it to happen. We have to make it happen. Because in order to avoid dramatic and catastrophic climate change, we need to sober up from fossil fuels by 2040, at the latest. So, fortunately, we don't have to start from scratch. It's been started already with electric cars. Norway introduced gradually stronger incentives for electric vehicles back in the 90s, hoping to kickstart a market. Now, there was a high, we put a high tax on fossil fuel cars and, of course, zero tax on zero emission cars. For a few years, this remained a narrow niche with small urban vehicles with only two seats. This is my first electric car. And my kids were thrilled to find the cars a few years later in the museum. <laughs> it's only 11 years old. And it's in the museum, the Technical Norwegian Museum. Now, because, you know, when we created this market, things changed really, really fast. Now, electric vehicles look like this. And 20% of car sales in Norway are now electric. And the parliament is aiming for 100% by 2025. The impact of this is not measured in Norwegian CO2 reductions. It's measured on this curve, the battery price curve. The battery price is falling just like solar energy. And Bloomberg now predicts that electric cars will dominate by the late 20s, simply because electric cars then will be cheaper than petrol cars. So how can we speed this up? How can we spread it to other countries? And not at least, how can we spread it to all sorts of vehicles? Now, what I would like to see is that a few cities, let's make it 10, try to change the world of trucking and deliveries forever by creating a market for zero-emission trucks, buses, lorries, vans, taxis, whatever. You know? And why do I want cities to do this? Because cities are large enough to have an impact, but small enough to get away with it. You see, the oil lobby, they're hanging around in parliaments, not in city halls. So here's how we do it. Create carrots for the early movers. Let them drive in bus lanes. Let them get, it, get, get away without paying for congestion charge. Establish free charging points. Give them some nice perks. Number two. Establish zero emission zones. Take your most attractive shopping district and say to the market, two years from now, all transport in this area needs to be zero emission. Number three, send a long-term signal. By 2030, all transport in our city must be zero emission. Now, some people will laugh at you. Some will protest and start lobbying against you. But some people will cheer. And some people will burst into tears of joy, knowing they can finally move outdoors in the city without getting seriously ill from air pollution. Now, where will this take us? It's, not, it's hard to tell for sure. But my guess is that if 10 cities of some size do this, the market will emerge. And where there is a market, producers will respond. If a truck producer got 200 orders for a truck that, that doesn't even exist, they will make it exist. They will invent it. And when they start making it, 500 more will order it. And, and suddenly, we have created a new value chain for a new, super cool, very large gadget, the zero emission truck. So, is this a fantasy? No. This one already exists. The Norwegian grocery supplier, Osco, is using this electric truck for distribution in Oslo. 
Now, some of you may recognize the driver. Um, that's, Prime <laughs> that's Prime Minister Anna Solberg, who drives Saturday shifts to supplement her income. <laughs> but this car, this truck, was made in a backyard, and it was very expensive, but it exists. What we need is for this truck to be mass-produced, just like your smartphone, so that it gets cheap. I claim that if cities, if we create local initial markets for all the gadget the world needs, we can change the world. Imagine your city without air pollution and engine noise. It's a vision worth fighting for, isn't it? So go out then and use your influence. If you are a leader, be a leader. If you are a citizen, be a good citizen and set things straight with your local city council. If you are a consumer, be a picky consumer. Choose the electric car from your car share. And maybe if all of us require our web-based food supplier to bring food to our door with an electric van rather than a diesel van, they may do it. They say that since climate change is a global problem, it only has global solutions. I don't think I don't, I don't believe global solutions exist. What does exist are local solutions that go global because they're brilliant. And local solutions, they are within reach if we all try. You don't have to rule the world to change the world. Thank you.